All right, today we're gonna to talk about what I call like artist's sight. And to me, that's the biggest difference between somebody who is a great artist and somebody that's struggling. And the, the, the whole thing about it is, it's just really teaching you how to see, um, see where the lines really are, see where things really exist. Uh, sort of the classic one to me is, is that you'll see a lot of kind of beginning artists will do an animal like this and then they know that the animal has four legs so they put the four legs in a line like this and I, I do use circles when I draw to help me out. I know that the dog's face is not a circle. Right. I know he has a neck. But I also know that when he stands, and though I can see one leg, I can't really see that second leg. It's behind. So that's the start of the, the whole perspective thing. And if you start observing things, you'll notice that like, uh, just for example, a chair, when we look at a chair, it's actually going to be wider at the front of the chair than at the back of the chair, even though we know that the chair has uh, got a square base to it. But that is because the front of the chair is closer to us than the back of the chair. And consequently, those line up back there. So that's a chair in perspective. That's all has to do with um, horizon point and that sort of thing. But you can kind of eyeball it pretty easy like that. Um, but it's all about recognizing ex and taking reference points. So if you notice, I drew this line through here. That's so I could get the edge of the chair right. So my reference point for where this leg should be was the back here where I had connected it. It'd be the same thing if you're drawing a face of a person and you're looking at them. So let's just say you start with this side and you can start with any par part of the body that you want. But my reference point for something might be this, um, the edge of where the jaw starts here. So I'm looking at this person and I'm seeing them and I'm saying, okay, where, where their face starts to curve back in is about where their ear starts. And then you can come down from there. So I'm using a reference point that I know of. And then when you draw from that, you're going to be um, pretty successful at creating something that's um, uh, pretty successful at creating something that looks, that looks right. Um, general human proportions puts the eyes at about the, where the bottom of the ears are and the eyebrows right above that, kind of on this line here. And then, yeah, it's, you definitely don't want to keep drawing the face without getting some reference points. So all that I'm drawing right now is reference points. Now, maybe after a while, you don't need to use them, but I still like them. And I would draw them in a lot of times. So what this does is this lets me put the eye here and put another eye over here. Um, what you want to do is kind of imagine a third eye in the middle. That's how a lot of eyes are spaced, but not all eyes. And you'll see plenty of cartoons that don't use that rule either. And there are some people whose faces are asymmetrical and you don't really notice that until you start to draw them. And then you notice that, oh, they have one eye that's taller than the other eye or whatever. That's very normal. So it's okay if it happens in your drawing too. Now, see, I notice I left a little eye width of space about. This would be for lighter weight brows, but of course we know that some brows could be heavier like this, and they might come in a little bit closer to the center if we wanted a heavier brow. If you do a full circle in the eye, it makes the person look very surprised. So you generally want to leave a little space down at the bottom. See how I left that little space there? 
Let's move him over. The nose goes to where the bottom of the ears are most times. Right? I had the nostrils. Don't have to get too complicated. And then if you kind of section off this, you'll get where the lips should be. I like to draw like the line of the lips first so that I can get an idea of what I want to do. And the corners have like a little bit emphasized darkness there. And then you can come up with the rest of the lip. Looks creepy without the other eye. There we go. All right, so talk to you a little bit about faces. I just kind of went with that. All right, let's start something else too. All right, I'm gonna show you this. This is a drawing that I have in here that uses, um, I gridded it all out and you can see that I did it. There's a circle that I used to start his head and then I put in a box for his body and then I did a line and then I did another box for his hips and then sticks for the legs and uh, sticks and stuff for the arms as well. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, it's pretty easy. I'm gonna show you an advanced stick figure. This is what one looks like. Um, and this way you can uh, use these to draw over top of and they're pretty easy to do. Um, and then you can really get in some great poses. Anywhere there's a circle is where you can bend them uh, adjust them. You notice that the hands also become a lot easier to draw this way too. You can pose the fingers how you want. Um, so I could pose, make a new hand right here, and let's just say I want him to have his thumb curled in and his fingers curled in. You know, I get a really good close perspective of how that would look. Or let's say I want him to be, he's got the thumb pulled in but he's pointing the first finger and then these fingers are bent. You know, so you, you can easily pose a hand using this stick figure, kind of advanced stick figure. Um, you can bend them a lot and get some pretty cool poses. So I'll do some little ones here. So let's kind of do like a cool superhero pose. You do have to kind of know how the body works, but this should help you. Um, it's great to, a good idea to look at pictures um, so that you can see. But basically, I'm going to bend this a lot. So the chest is kind of bent like this, and this arm is coming down. And then I'm going to draw the hand splayed out. And then, so then we got the spine connects all through here. And then there's that little hip box. All right, so this is all spine. The shoulders are at the ends of these points. And he's gonna have this arm curled up with like a fist. All right, then the hip joints are right there. This knee is up here. Your foot. And this one is going to be down. We're going to keep these this length and that length about the same. Otherwise you might end up with one really long foot. Alright, so now we have somebody that looks like maybe there's like a fence here and they're jumping over the fence. Like springing over the fence ready to punch somebody or kick them. All right, you can also get some, um, I'm gonna show you here with these sort of advanced stick figures. <clears throat> you can also get somebody standing very dramatically. And you can just, you don't even have to fill these in yet. You can just, um, 
you know, just practice with the stick figures. So let's see. So I bent the spine and cocking the hips. Bring this knee straight down. Straight under that. And then this one's gonna be like way out here. It gives me room because it's lower. And then if I wanna put my hand on the hip or the waist, Now, when you drew the draw the rest of the body, you might not even see this elbow anymore. It's gonna be waving at y'all, cool. Like, sup? And these ones are gonna be folded down. Peace. So then, when you draw the rest of the body, this all connects together, and you get this cool, slopey body. Basically, putting all the skin on top of the bones that you've already drawn. Let me see, look. Now, after a while, practicing this sort of thing, you'll start to see the shapes without having to draw all these inner frame pieces. You might just want to draw like the general line of the spine or something like that. But then the rest of these you would start to see and you could just draw the, go ahead and draw the flesh covering or draw the fingers ahead of time. There it is.